Cuatro. Hola. <risa> Hola chicos, bienvenidos. Hola chicos y chicas, bienvenidos a nuestro canal de YouTube. The fish el fish, el pescado Platón. <risa> No, es that que that no soy no sabo, que, pero cuando me pongo nervioso como que me sale poquito. I would have done it way better than you. Okay, do it then. Okay. Since you do it so Tres, good. dos, uno. Hola chicos, bienvenidos a nuestro canal de YouTube. Este es mi hermano Miguel, yo me llamo Brenda y hoy vamos a estar hablando de historias mexicanas. De... Yeah. That was way better, Miguel. I told you I you were Spanish so in good. a long time. I'm, Now I'm you're better. I have my skills. No, yeah. No, I, uh, I've been told you we should do it in Spanish for a long time. It's always kind of good, huh? Yeah. Like, we should do it. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I like I stuff more it. in Spanish. I liked it. I think it's not a hell of a professional. Maybe we go famous in Spanish. I don't know. Why not? I feel like there's, you know, I mean... You know, like, TikTok and, like, stuff that, like, Hispanic people post? Mm -hmm. We like that. We are like that. I mean, we are Mexican. No, but like, you know, like the, like the memes, like the Mexican memes. Yeah, they're funny. We, yeah, we, 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 Tea and all the gossip and all the scary stories that I watch is mostly in Spanish. So I don't know if it's because of my algorithm, but I mean, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, maybe we pop off in Spanish. Maybe. I don't know. We're not popping off. El okay? fishbowl. El fishbowl. The fish with the mustache on it. Yeah, <laughs> with little sombreros on yeah. it. Yeah. Anyways, Maraca, speaking of Spanish. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de <laughs> Mayo. <laughs> Taco. No, but honestly, taco, taco the intro sounded really good in Spanish, huh? Yeah, I'm saying Spanish. I'm head of like no sabo. Like that Who? sounded really good. Me, I sounded professional. Yeah. Like I could have kept going. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. You were. Because I got nervous. I was zone. feeling it. I was feeling it. But anyways, um, so my mom works with this girl. Oh, does she? That. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> no. The fuck? <laughs> she does. No, but my mom works with this girl. And she watches our podcast. Oh, she told me a little bit. <laughs> and her name is Estrella. So if you if you're watching this, hey, uh, my mom told me that you're watching her podcast. And she had a dream about us. That's crazy. You know what? what she We're was famous. Dreaming about? I don't. We're famous. <laughs> we made it. And hey, people having dreams about us. <laughs> We're dreamy. We're dreamy as fuck. Oh, but anyways, she had a dream about us. And it's so random. You know what she dreamt about? She, wait, oh, did my mom tell you about I think it? I think so. so we're she, criminals. Yeah. yeah. So she had a dream that we were interviewing her, mm. but we yeah her. Yeah. That you were too. driving, and, and also bleed because I know it's going to get reported or something. But anyways, um, that we took her, and I guess I had a big, like, pew, 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 and that I was holding her, and I was interviewing her. But we were talk, laughing. We were stuff. holding her ransom. Yeah, but, but like, I mean, I'm sure you're interesting, but not interesting enough we're for not, me. To you like, don't gotta worry about us, kid. Yeah, yeah, but anyways, I thought that was kind of funny. I mean, we're poor enough to be dreamt about. Um, like, hey. eh, 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 we made it. Hey. You know what I mean? <laughs> I That's what was, really matters. I thought it was kind of funny, but anyways, um, speaking of Spanish and Mexican, you know how I was telling you that I was watching like like mexican creepy stories and stuff mm -hmm. okay i don't know about you but like i feel like especially when you're a minority i feel like there's hella like creepier stories like that comes within like you know your roots and stuff i don't know it just sounds yeah. creepier you know what i mean but when i was going through the story i i was i read the story about this like mannequin slash daughter So her name was La Pascualita, mm -hmm. which I love that name because Pascual was our great grandpa's name. And it's, I don't know. Is like, it related? No, they're not related. <laughs> But like, I love those names. Like those weird names that nobody uses no more. But Pascual. anyways, Pascual, Pascual is a, it's a cool name. It's, cool name. it's like very classic. Yeah. Like it's like, 
like a famous like old school like actor like yeah. that's what i think with the little hat that has like the thing on top yeah of like a yeah. fancy guy but anyways so uh la pascualita so this story and it's real so this story it was about this young lady um that was about to get married and her parents owned a like dress store and it was called La Popular and it was located in Michoacan, Mexico. And she, uh, oh no, no, I'm lying, not Michoacan, Chihuahua, Mexico, Chihuahua, mm -hmm. Mexico, which is Lexus Sonora where we're from. Hey, but anyways, we're from there. yeah. And uh, that store was really big and it was really popular. So when the parents found out that their daughter was gonna get married, obviously they wanted to go all out with the dress or whatever. They bought a dress from Paris. Like they wanted to go all out. It was a really big day. Days before the daughter was gonna get married, a scorpion got tangled in her veil and stung her and they couldn't save her. She passed away. That's crazy. Yeah, she passed away and that was their only daughter and they were so devastated and so sad that they couldn't save her and two days later or something like a day later two days later uh a mannequin appeared at the center of the store like right where it's on display and everybody started looking at the mannequin and they were like that really looks like like pascualita which it was the daughter that was gonna get married and everybody would question like that really looks like her like that, that really looks like her and this mannequin which will put a picture does not look like a regular, regular mannequin. Like if you look at the pictures, like like I was shocked. Like you're gonna show me them. Yeah, I'm gonna show you them. <laughs> like you know mannequins, what they look like. You know what I mean? Like you can tell they're plastic, they're smooth. You know what I mean? Especially their hands is like this. Yeah, and back in the day, I mean, things were not like as like detailed as they are now. It's probably just like a, like a <laughs> like a, a stick, cream, yeah. a cream thing. <laughs> yeah, like like an outline of something, right? But this mannequin, you're gonna be shocked when I show you the pictures you can see detail on the nails like you can see the veins the wrinkles the veins on the eyes like the, the like discolored like corner of, of the mouth like you can see all these details every single strand of hair which mannequins don't normally have they just have like a blob where the hair is like you know and people just started finding it weird and the owners so the parents they would not allow anybody to change a mannequin so only they were allowed to change the mannequin, like the dresses off of it, and nobody was allowed to touch it. And there's two versions that I found out that um, they found out that it wasn't a mannequin, but it was the daughter itself that they sent the daughter's body to get embalmed. Well, like mummified. Yeah, embalmed and waxed. So the, they preserved like the outside. Um, because so one one of the one part of the story is said that like a worker since the the story became more popular they had workers and a worker wanted to clean the mannequin and she cleaned one of the eyes and it broke off or fell off and that's how they found out it was like a real body and then another version of it it says that they were gonna do like a dress contest like you know in the town or whatever and they wanted to carry that mannequin because it was very popular people wanted to see it. it became famous and when they carried the body to the truck that they were going to put in it broke in half and it like shattered and they could see they had bones and stuff in it and mm -hmm. you know like powder of body but either way like when you go to the store even now they have it oh that's another twist way I looked it up like where it is currently because I wanted to see like a current picture of it and it went missing. Oh, for real? Yeah, it went missing. So they don't know. That's why people were saying those stories about how they found out that the body was real because um, they put another mannequin instead of the the one that, that broke off or whatever that looked like it, but it wasn't the same one. They could tell because the quality of like, you know, how the hands look and all that stuff, like a regular mannequin this time. Mm -hmm. And then one night it just disappeared. So now they put instead of the the mannequin because it's gone now it, it has like her story like how it came about or whatever and nobody knows where it's at right now that's creepy yeah it's creepy but it's kind of sad because like if you think about it like it was a real person and the parents were like really upset and she died before her wedding like a day that everybody was looking forward to and i mean imagine like you had a dress store you wait for the day that your daughter will get married 
Like, like, yeah, that's like yeah. the end of your life. That's like the ultimate, like, bruh. I know, and like, I was I was watching this other podcast. I can't remember what the name was, and this guy was like, he was like intensely stoned as well. <laughs> and he was like, "Do you ever realize that like death is the end of everybody's story?" <laughs> like, yeah, for real. <laughs> no, lately, death is kind of like it's interesting. It's interesting. It's scary. It's scary, but like death gives purpose. A little bit. Yeah, I mean, if you did, like, I don't think anybody would be inspired to do anything if, like, they didn't know that life is, like... One day you would die. Yeah, meaningless. That's crazy. I don't want to die. I don't either. Yeah, because I'm a mental. But anyways, yeah, the story made me kind of sad. Oh, and then, like, then, since people, like, really loved seeing her, and, like, it kind of became, like, like, a visitor spot, like, to look at her and stuff, um... They started believing that whatever dress she was wearing that season or like that bridal season or whatever was a dress to buy, even if it was like ugly or whatever. Uh, it was a marketing. <laughs> no, scam. they did say that like whoever would buy the dress uh, that she was wearing. No, uh, yeah, like they would have a happy marriage. And people would say, I mean, whatever, but I, <laughs> like I love scary stuff, but then I feel like I freak myself out too much and then I can't go to sleep. Like when I was driving back, like. Yeah, but you also get really scary. Well, it's because I feel like I've seen and I've heard so much shit. You know what I mean? And then I think about it all at once, like, at the most inappropriate time. Are you more scared of, like, physical, regular things? Or, like, spirits I mean, and, like, bad What's energies? physical, though? Like, like... Like a human coming in and breaking in. Like, oh, yeah, I'm more scared of that. Sliding in under the Yeah, I'm more scared of that, because that can kill me, for real. But, like, I feel like... Okay, like, I'm not trying to shit, to talk shit about Letty. Or <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to talk shit about her, but like she thinks she sees something, and she's like, "I'm so scared!" Right? Literally, scary shit has happened to me before, and I, you guys know all these stories. When I was in North Dakota, and it was literally spirits, and we had to get the house blessed, like legit shit, right? That shit scared me. You know what I mean? So I've seen shit. It's not like stuff that I made up or I thought I seen. Like, like things. I think I saw a shadow and like she gets freaked out. No, like I've seen shit get thrown, like stuff like that, and it freaks me out. But I'm talking about like stories of like real stuff happening, like stuff like that, or like really scary like deaths and like you know stuff happening that like I think I overthink it. That I like that's what freaks me out. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like I. It like, seems too real to you. Yeah, like, it seems too real. And, like, it seems like real-life situations. Like, you know, the accident of all the babies that I was telling you about earlier. I'm like, damn, that could happen in real life. Like, that's what I overthink. It doesn't scare me that it's, like, ghosts. I mean, ghosts do scare me. But, like, about situations that could happen in real life to me, that's what freaks me out. Speaking about those situations that could happen in real life. Do you remember <laughs> hearing about yeah. uh, La Guarderia ABC? Yeah. Wait, what is it, then? So has well, you heard about it? The only reason why I know a little bit about it because Maddie... Uh, she told you, us, huh? She told me a little bit, but, like, I don't remember. Yeah, I remember, like, she was talking, like, for real, when I think about that, that's, like, the first memory that I have. Is oh, Mary God. telling my mom, like, yo, like, this just happened. Because those people that don't know were from Sonora. Obregón. <laughs> <laughs> but Hermosillo right. is, like, the big city next to her, like, close to her, right? Our auntie, she used to work there. And uh, so there was this guarderia, it was guarderia, they say. And this the guarderia day. was sketched, like from the beginning, like getting the permits out and stuff like that. They didn't make qualifications. But it was affordable do. or something like that. Yeah, it was crazy affordable. That's why it was so packed. It was like, it wasn't even like a building building with windows and stuff like that. That's so it was bad. for real. Oh, so <laughs> It was for real like a bodega. That's like for real like so a door. Bad. That's so bad. And then, I mean, we don't mean to laugh. No. I mean, I don't No, mean we're saying that, like, we're just... It's funny we're that they thought right they, they yeah. it was cool. Yeah. But uh, it was a bodega. And, like, they had an office where, like, legitly they were falsifying documents, keeping, like, all this stuff. That's like, so safety codes. They had nothing. Everything was sketched. Everything about it. And supposedly they had ordered to burn all the documents in from that office that were all the documents of like all the records and stuff. 
They did it. The whole bodega caught on fire with the little kids inside. So they ended up dying because they didn't get the oxygen that they needed because it was a pretty big fire. These are babies. Babies. So they were all under five and 49 of them died due to the fire. And there was another, I think, 78 or 79 injured. Okay, just that many people. Imagine that many people in one building. I don't care how Hot. big the building is. That is that seems like a lot of people for one mm -hmm. building. Period. Like, doesn't matter how big yeah. it is. And it's really sketch how like they for real had like no safety stuff, zero fire extinguishers. How, how come they couldn't fire. get out? That's why like there's so much like stuff that goes into it. So many conspiracies and stuff like that. Because even politically, like there's stuff going on still until like 2023. There still hasn't been anybody accused or been responsible for. That's crazy. Yeah. That's so irresponsible. Mm. I think because they thought that like nothing like that would happen. You know what I mean? And then it happens and damn, but that's a lot of babies. That's a lot of people to be in 49. one building, period. Like that's, that's crazy. a lot. Yeah. Like I remember. Like that's more than like your average classroom. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. How many, like that's a lot of people to fit in one like, it even was if it a, was, like, a building, like... It was literally a bodega, like... Tin. No windows. Yeah, or not tin, but, like, uh, concreto and then tin. That's crazy. But I remember that they meant... Because I saw little, like, clippings of, like, little, like, news stuff. Hmm. And it was saying that, that, that they didn't have windows. And then that... Um, that they like they didn't pass a lot of testings that they would do yeah. you know that they, and they run in buildings and stuff like that and but that's the reason why it was so affordable and a lot of families were able to take their kids there or whatever i don't know that like as a mother that would sketch me out like why is it that cheap but you think about that like now but you know like think about like these parents are busy yeah they, they have to get to work. need somebody and they're you know how mexico is like the economy and it's so sad because i remember there was like a volunteer or something like that that offered to make like crosses for all the babies or whatever and they laid them down in this piece of land and it was so many miguel like i don't know if we can find a picture but it was so many with like baby shoes and stuff and it was so sad because like they're so young. You said under, they were five? under five. That's crazy. That makes me sad. That's what I'm saying. Like stuff like that. Like I can overthink, and that's what like scares me. Like it scares me out because it's like, damn. Like this is a real shit. Yeah, like, this was happen, like you know? fifteen years ago. Mm, those babies would have been like what, like twenty? Like fifteen years ago. Yeah, if they were like under five. Like twenty, nineteen. Oh, that's crazy. And speaking now that we're talking about like near where we're from. I was talking to my mom, and I was thinking about this the other day too, actually, because I don't, I don't know what I was thinking about, but um, there's this road. You don't remember the Espinazo del Diablo, right? I I don't remember it being called that, but like once you guys started talking about it, I was like, that just sounds really funny. Espinazo such a like weird fun word. <laughs> I just want to say Espinazo pa. No, Espinazo like I feel like it sounds like like uh. Espinazos de Tijuana. <laughs> Espinazo de Diablo, pero al diablo. Pero espinazo. You know what I mean? Espinoso. Bien espinoso. No, but anyway. Um, mm. There's this. <laughs> I'm over it. But, anyways, um, I remember this clearly because. Not only did I already know about it, but I remember our dad and his siblings talk about it all the time. Like, it's something that, like, all semi-trucks know about it. Oh. No, I mean, not semi-trucks. Semi-truck drivers. No, the literal the semi-truck. Semi talk amongst them about <laughs> Espinazo del Diablo. And Espinazo del Diablo translates to the devil's mm. spine. So... Pretty much what it, it talks about is this road and it's I, I don't remember how many miles but it consists of it's like 40 something miles yeah it, but it's long like mm. it's a long way but it's kind of like an unavoidable route that you have to take and it's a route that connects um Mazatlan to 
Mas Atlanto, I can't remember right now. I'll put it right Another now. big city. Yeah. But you have to go through there. And all semi truck drivers, they're scared of crossing there. So it's not like one person fear of it. Like, there's been many legends about it, there's many stories about it. I know our dad personally was scared about it. And even I, I remember, remember he would tell, like, yeah. even though, like, thinking about it, he would tell me. Yeah. And I remember, even as little, I remember them telling each other stories about it. And I remember one clearly, I remember two stories, but I remember one clearly that one of our uncles he came back from a trip and he was pale like he was pale like i've never seen anybody like that like he almost looked like his blood was like drained out of him like he looked yellow like you know what i mean he, he looked ill yeah he looked ill and i remember like he couldn't calm down and he was like out of breath and like like i've never seen somebody like that and i remember my mom was there and i like we were all little and they were asking like what happened what happened what happened and then he was like well i was in the espinazo del diablo right this route and i don't know why i'm whispering <laughs> no but he said that um he was there and he heard something on the tire so he needed to get down and everybody knows not to stop so if you need to go use the bathroom if you need water you better do it before you stop you know what i mean before you even get there so uh and i'm telling you this place is dangerous like they say that it's always cloudy or foggy like and it consists over three thousand turn so imagine how far this place is like it's turned i'll post a picture it, it looks really dangerous like it's like if you fall off the edge you're done you know what i mean and it's really known for like cars and semi trucks flipping over so um he said he heard something on the tire so he had to get down even though he didn't want to so he had to get off and go across to the other side and um he tripped and he fell and he fell on a tomb That's he crazy. fell on a tomb and when he looked back, he saw that it was a tomb. He got freaked out. He stood up. He ran across. And he ran across to his to the door. We didn't lose. <laughs> and he turned back to look at the end of the what's it called? Like the trailer? Or the like cabin. the cabin. And he saw a skull, like the death. Yeah. He said he got in the car and he didn't stop. That he wanted to use the restroom. He didn't stop and he just like turned around and came straight home. He was so freaked out that he's never seen anything like that and that he would never stop again that like he he just but the look in his face like really mm. freaked me out and i remember he like would tell us that story but he would tell it like legit you know like yeah he literally saw yeah because so. i remember he said that like the muerte was like looking at him yeah. and it was like shaky it wasn't mm -hmm. like a mm -hmm. like a school you know it was yeah. like shaky yeah so like in I'm talking about like you know old school Mexican guys where they're like prideful and they don't believe in like you yeah, know they're scary not scared stuff. of anything like you know what I mean so if you see somebody especially when you're that little and you see somebody big and strong and not scared like that come home or pale like believe in shit like that shit's gonna freak you out you know what I mean and yeah so you don't remember also that they would tell the story that I don't remember who it was I don't mm -hmm. know if it was your Tio Jule or your dad but they were driving and i think it was some place similar to that mm. but that he saw somebody off in the distance and the closer that they got to him he like noticed that they started like glowing i remember you that they said something about? about an alien if yeah that's the same story. and then yeah. they're like as soon as they got close by they're like all he saw was that the person was glowing yeah i think we're talking about the same story yeah i, I think it was no, i think, I think it was like i think it was alejandro too I, I think it was the same person. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe he was on some. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he eating all this stuff? No, but yeah, I remember he would always talk about that. And like, he, like I saw a bunch of stories, a lot of people talking about that. And like, throughout that road, they put a lot of crosses. They blessed that road. They put a lot of uh, Virgen Marias. They have put a lot of things into that, that road because there have been so many accidents. And if you look at a angle like it looks like the devil's face like it looks like eyes and like it looks really creepy like i would be really? scared of going through there too yeah there's a there's a hike here in washington aluminum cloth that is kind of like that like the more you go in the more you see like crosses and, i'm like, scared people I'm dying scared. and stuff like that i'm like bro why is this so open <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't want to turn around yeah a little bit but i still work you know i never scared but you think they're actually like die there yeah or they but a lot of the dates is from like winter 
So I don't know if like they go in fishing and like they got lost or like what. Damn, you must be really passionate about hiking if you see people dying and you continue going. You know what I mean? Like, like maybe not like at the time that you're going, but I'm talking about like winter time if you're knowing that that's when they're dying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I wouldn't man. do that. I wouldn't do it either. Like, you know the people that like they climb like Mount Everest that they see, like they pass like the dead bodies. Yeah. Do but, you know there's a point on Mount Everest? I forget what it's called, but it's like point something or like point Nemo, I think. Something mm -hmm. like no, I think that's like in the water. But there's this point, right? That if you have to go on a crew because you know, obviously you have to go on a crew. If somebody dies, it's a legit like we have to continue with the thing. <gasps> We're gonna leave you. Like everybody grab what you can. I can't. Like, yeah, and you literally just like continue the hike up. You have to. Damn, you have to be really fucked up to do that. I don't think that me emotionally. I don't well, think, think about it. It's like a weeks, month journey, right? I don't know. I don't think it's going to. You're okay. Who, who is it? If it's a stranger, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's Paco. It's Paco. But yeah, maybe. But if it's like a family member, you can leave me behind if I'm like dead. I mean, if it's like 10 feet away, I'm going to go pee. I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna keep an eye <laughs> out. I'm like the body over the. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't make it. Couldn't make it. <laughs> couldn't be me. <laughs> Damn, lazy. <laughs> no, but like, if it was like a family member, somebody I cared about, yeah, I'm not exactly. leaving. Mm -hmm. Like, you no. And like, those bodies stay there. Like, that's so sad. Even if you're dying, like, you know, doing the happiest thing, I don't know. I don't think I would do that. I don't know. I think I love my life too much. Like, you wouldn't ever, like, tell him about me. I think it'd be cool. Yeah. But I don't think I would give up my life to do it. Or like if you started to feel some type of way, you'd be like, Yeah, oh, I would know. immediately climb back. <laughs> like, I would throw myself back. Like, I, I don't, down the mountain. yeah, I don't think I, there's nothing in this world that I would risk my life. And like, I'm adventurous. I like doing all this crazy shit. I always have, but like, I don't think, I love my life so much and everything surrounding it that I don't think I'm willing to risk anything anymore. Wow. That's yeah, oh, that's good. I love my life. I feel like I've lived my life to the fullest. I already told you that. I have a birthday coming up at Chuck E. Cheese. I'm living my dreams. Like you're, you're curing your child. <laughs> I am for real. Like, okay, this is how I see it. Like, yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, I know some people are gonna be like, that's funny, that's ridiculous, whatever the fuck. But. I feel like people that know me, like, for some reason, I feel like you guys don't think it's that ridiculous. No, I was just, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll be there. <laughs> you had a birthday party for your dog and you bought him a cake. Yeah. <laughs> but, for example, and I had everybody sing happy birthday. Yeah. And everybody did it because they're just like, okay. <laughs> this is healthier. This is for her, okay? No, like, I feel like, for example, I've had, I think every party that i've wanted to so far you know what i mean like i feel like i've been to the club i feel like i already had a big birthday party i had a little kid birthday party i've had like a drinking dancing party like i've had every party that i wanted to and like i love Chuck E. cheese i love Chuck E. cheese you know what i mean you get the unlimited thing yeah two hours unlimited you know what i mean that's crazy the only reason okay i have an explanation but it was like and I love Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other way to put it. <laughs> like, I, I can't. I love Chuck E. Cheese. And I was thinking, what do I want to do for my birthday? I was like, I do want to drink. I do want to eat. I want to dance. Like, I want to do all this stuff. And I'm like, that's like, we can do that any weekend. You know what I mean? I want to do something different. I want to do something unexpected, right? I was like, I want to do something fun. And I was like, I want to go to an arcade. But I was like, I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Whatever. So I was like, this thing popped up for Chuck E. Cheese, and I'm like, I fucking love Chuck E. Cheese. Like, I love it when the kids say that they want to go to Chuck E. Cheese, because I want to go, you know what I mean? Like, I want to get my two hours unlimited, like, you know what I mean? And don't bother me, like, you know what I mean? Like The so, kids, mom, 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 no. I don't care. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I love arcades. It's cheaper than going to a regular arcade. You get pizza. Is like, it? Yeah. Yeah, when I go to round one, when I go to another arcade, I spend like one sixty, and I spend like round nothing. one is like an adult arcade. Yeah, it's, but it's expensive. Like if I if you want to play as many games as I want to play, 
Like, I'm spending 200 bucks. Like, you know what I mean? A Chuck E. Cheese, well, it's still pricey at Chuck E. Cheese, but, like, not as pricey. Like, I'll spend 60 bucks and I can play, like, an hour and a half, you know? But anyways, my kids love it. I love it. Like, when me and Tapu go, we both play. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so, anyways, so I saw it and I was like, oh, my God. Like, I, every time I go to Chuck E. Cheese, I always tell them that. I was like, every, when I was little, when we first came to the U.S., I thought Chuck E. Cheese was, like, luxury. I thought it was, like, unreachable. I thought only, like, white rich kids could do this. And now that I bring my kids, I'm like, it's, the ghetto. It, it's affordable. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not unrealistic. I could bring no, them everything. No, Tacoma is the ghetto. That's the best one. I love it. That's where I'm having mine. Like, I love it so much. It's a Tacoma one. Yeah. <laughs> With the skinny Chuck E. Cheese. The crack down. Yeah. But, anyway, so, like, I don't know. It brings me a lot of, like, back to like the childhood that i wish i had and then i'm like i want to have a birthday party at chuck e cheese i'm having it i'm having it you guys are gonna play with me it's like an arcade you know what i mean my kids are gonna have fun yeah the only difference is like it's chuck e cheese but it's like yeah an it has the same games as a regular arcade they it for food. real does they have, food. they have food and okay let me tell you how the my party came about wait so we were just gonna go play they're, they're gonna let you a grown adult have a party there. yeah there's no age that's when i found out so i was on my phone and i have the chuck e cheese app because now i take my kids all the time so I, I i get points and it said it said thinking about having a birthday party at chuck e cheese um i'm interested oh, yes <laughs> like how do you know so i pressed on it because i was curious and it said 99 dollars for a birthday package and then you get three six three no you get six wristbands for two hours unlimited for 99 dollars. i don't care what else came with it i was like that's a hell of a deal so i got it and i mean i don't want anything else i don't want the tablecloth i don't want all the stuff but i i do want to go in the in the thing where i catch the tickets, the tickets. <laughs> and uh i want the band to save me no, <laughs> and i want chucky just to come out me no. You were saying just <laughs> kidding, but you're gonna be over there. <laughs> take a picture, take a picture. Yeah. No, I do, I do want the bracelets, and I want to go in the thing, and that's gonna cure my inner child. And watch, we're gonna have so much fun. I know we're gonna have so much fun. I think yeah. it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be one of the best birthdays I've had. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. not gonna get any younger. You know what's so funny? That like in the family. Yeah. Like. Wait, wait, and because it's my birthday, all of you guys have to give me your tickets. No. What do you want? Your, it's your birthday. <laughs> You've had thirty other ones. No. <laughs> You're not getting my tickets. But what do you want? You don't even know what they. The want. hand that sticks. <laughs> For what? It doesn't even stick to anything. I just want either a stuffy or a T-shirt. That's all I want. Okay. It's my birthday. I'm the then do for, good. If it was your birthday, I would give it to you. No, you wouldn't. Yes, I would. No, I want a Laffy Taffy. <laughs> I'll give you a Laffy Taffy. No. How about you give it to me and I give everybody one thing? I'll be responsible with it. <laughs> <laughs> the gifts I give The way you're saying it doesn't make me. <laughs> you said that he's going to give them to me. Okay. Larry said no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tapu said no. The kids said yeah. Tapu said no. <laughs> yeah. He said he wants something to do. <laughs> yeah. A okay. ball. I think my mom and mom would give it to them. Yeah, yeah. they would. Yeah. Not this me. is my birthday. I feel like that's what's fair. I can guarantee I'm not going to give it to them. <laughs> <laughs> that's so tough. If it was your birthday, I would give it to them. No, you wouldn't. I feel like I no. would. No. You feel like you would, but you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like I, I wouldn't, but then at the time, I feel like I would just give it to you. No. Yeah. You would. No, you wouldn't. Stop talking. <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> okay, okay. I already spilled it. No. And then you would go. <laughs> anyway, it's gonna get. <laughs> yeah. No, but no. I feel like Okay, it's I think it's cool that it, like, out of the family, yeah. we're the generation, or like, we're like the people in the family that are literally doing whatever they want. Yeah. Because, like, think about it, your cousins, even the ones in the other fa like, family, they don't do that. No. They're, We're the they're, ones out here chasing the... I mean, I don't know if necessarily it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would keep out a little broken. 
I don't know. If, I think like, it's an amazing thing. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like what I'm doing is the best thing in the world. Like, I feel like I'm having the best time. Oh, but somebody could see it like, oh, yeah, she and even I, Yeah, and I feel like... <laughs> I feel like somebody's gonna be like, damn, she's having her birthday party at church. She's period. 31. Uh, but you know what I mean? I feel like everybody has different like okay. thoughts about it, but I mean, it's up to me if I care or not. You know what I mean? Thanks. And I don't think I necessarily care. Like, you know what I mean? I feel like literally at age 26, I stopped caring what people thought, For to be real? honest. Yeah, like, I, like completely. Like, I don't want to say like 18 and stop caring. Like, I think you always kind of care. I think I completely 100% stopped caring what people thought about me at like 25, 26. Mm. Like, honestly. So I could give like two shits and a half what people think. I feel me. like I'm kind of there. I'm still working on it. Because sometimes I do be like, ah. Uh, well, you have one more year and you're done. <laughs> like, you you're, yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm telling you, you're done. And. I, I that's what I said like everybody has their own goals like and like I was telling my mom earlier like I realized like damn I saw my Chuck E. Cheese invitation and I'm like damn it literally says 31 and I'm like what's, what's the next with the self <laughs> with the self <laughs> wait I'm gonna post my, my invitation so everybody can see you guys can come <laughs> you guys are invited we'll be done by then <laughs> but I want I want everybody to say but it's like I look at my Chuck E. Cheese invitation and I'm like Damn, I'm 31. What's the next step? And I'm like, who the fuck cares? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm doing it as what I think it is. There's no fucking rules. Like, there's no age for anything. Like, that's how I see it. Like, some people might, might see it as immature. Like, I know my mom has a different opinion. Like, I know. Ah, well, she's going to be over there playing the SpongeBob <laughs> coin one. Yeah. yeah, but like, not necessarily just that. But I'm like, oh my God, I should, I should already own a house by now. Or I should already... But who says? You know what I mean? There's people at my age that like are like doing yeah. way worse or doing way and better. And one of those you know? things so that like, like people don't understand is like if you're 45 and you're buying your first house, you're still buying your first house. There's mm -hmm. nothing to take away from the fact that you did it later on. Yeah, facts. That is you true. You still did it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It. No, and nobody can take that away from you. That's nah, still your. There's people out there that haven't bought a house like. And that's a huge, and that's just an example. I'm like, that's what know. I'm saying, because like I feel like, and it's not to throw my mom under the bus or anything, but like for example, to her, <laughs> shocked. <laughs> I feel like to her, like it's a big goal, but I feel like that is her personal goal. Be like, oh, you have to own your house. Right? Yeah, but you also <laughs> gotta think about like first generation. Yeah, yeah, I feel like you know, her. but I know she sees it more of like she wants to be settled to be sure you know like secure yeah so to her it's like a big deal but like for me it's like i'm living my best life traveling and going to puerto rico going to mexico and this, you know what i mean mm -hmm. like having three travels within a year like to me that's living my best life i agree with you with the point that you said that like a house it's a really big commitment it is for real yeah. like and i don't have commitment issues but it's like for something material something that i know might be paying off probably until the day i die it is a big commitment because uh, it's like I feel like it is going into something, but not really. Like as soon as I, I as I save up like three thousand or four thousand bucks, I'm like, I'm booking a flight. <laughs> I'm doing something with this. Yeah. Like I can't. I feel like I gain more from that. I feel like I'm learning more from that. Like yeah. you know what I mean. Like in a house, yes, it's a big deal. I know eventually we're gonna end up, if not renting, buying a house. But to me, it's just like a shell. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's how I see it. But not a lot of people see it that way. I feel like also, we have a different perspective as like the young... I don't know about you. I'm the younger generation. Okay. Speak up. Mentally. Speak up. <laughs> no, but like the younger generation. Well, physically. The... Speak up. Because <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> the younger generation. Yeah. Like, back in the day, you could literally buy a house and literally just own it. Yeah. And know that it's going to go up in value. Yeah. Now you're buying a house that's not that good for, for a not, billion like, dollars. It, and that's what I'm saying. Like, and it's probably going to lose value. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. And it's not like we haven't searched. Like, trust me, I've looked at these houses. I'm not impressed. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're ugly. No, they especially lot. here in Washington. Yeah. It's crazy. That's what I'm saying. Like, and you can move somewhere to, like, Texas or something where they're way cheaper. Everybody says that, but then also, the like... Uh, mm. minimum 
and stuff over there. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, I don't know. Like, to me, it's not very important. Like, to me, I feel like I'm living my best life. But, like, I feel like, you know, when it's all my age in paper, I'm like, damn, I feel like I need to do something. But I'm like, eh. like, I'll get over next it. Year, you know what I mean? Next year. Yeah, maybe next year. And then it will keep going. But at the same time, like, I feel like I'm not irresponsible. I feel like I have kept my life in check. But it's like... I feel like there is this like expectation that it's like at this age you have to do this at this age you have to do that and I feel like it hasn't hit me until like now like now that I like it, I feel like when it hits me like at maybe like 35 I'll be like okay now I have to like do something yeah. you know but anyways um oh you know what this reminds me when I went to Puerto Rico there's like a really cool fact about it that I had no idea until I was there mm. so when I arrived in Puerto Rico, so I had an ex. Well, I want I want I want to call him an ex. Like a situation ship, right? Mm. And when I arrived there and he saw that on my story, he he was like, "Hey, he gave me like a list of like facts and things like, "Oh, you should try this. You need to go here. You need to stay away from here." And I'm like, you need to stay away from here. And I was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> the city you're staying in. <laughs> yeah, no. you like, stay away from the city. And I'm like, and and I'm like, what? And he was like, you need to stay away from blah 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 blah. I can't remember the name of the town. And I noticed when we were driving from the airport, there was this huge building, like a really tall building, that looked like broken down and kind of like, like old, like you know, broken down. And it said. The police doesn't rule us, like in in Spanish, and I I don't know. It just kind of caught my attention because I've never seen that like in graffiti, like it was painted but big enough to like you read it really out. So we're driving back. That's when I got that message, and then I remember I was like, I wonder if that's the same area that he told me. So then I looked it up online, and I guess that oh la perla, that's what it's called. That area is like a territory where like law like doesn't exist really? like cops are not allowed in there and like one time i don't know when but it was like recently a cop tried to go in there to try to stop because i guess like drugs are like um, the bad there. Stuff, bad yeah stuff. bad stuff is there and um he tried to go in there to catch somebody or whatever and he got killed and then mm. it was like a like a tourist that also went in there and like he got killed and Stuff there's stuff. a lot of like places like this especially like in like down south like brazil yeah. and like but that was kind of creepy because like you know i was all, all like beachy and like you know like like a and shit and it's like don't cross her you're gonna get killed <laughs> like uh, but uh, that makes me really curious like what's inside i mean it doesn't look ugly because you can see it like there's this area i can't remember what it's called but like it's kind of like a deck I know it's like this really beautiful area, but like you can see across the water and then you can see the area and the building is so colorful. That's actually where they recorded Despacito. That's where they recorded it. In and there? then they got permission from the people to record it there. Yeah. In the buildings, they look nice and stuff, but like, I guess you're not allowed to go there. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was like such a like- So they got um, money. I mean, they're drunk, they're drug lords in there and stuff. Oh, so they got money. Yeah, so I'm sure they got money, but like, yeah, so like, that's why that building was there. And I thought that was so, such a like cool fact. See, that's that's the type of shit I like learning. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. and yeah, I'll be curious to cross there too. But yeah, I was like, what's up? Like, what's can I cross? Uh, like, what are we kicking? <laughs> no, I mean it's it's cool, but like, I mean, I feel like they also they wouldn't me- because that's what he said on his message. Like, they wouldn't mess with you if you don't know that you're crossing, but you'd be able to tell that you're crossing. Like, there's warning signs and stuff, and, like, there's, like, a barrier or whatever. But, like, you shouldn't want to go there on purpose because it, I guess if you go through this area that is, like, a visitor area, you can easily cross. But there's people guarding that that barrier. So I'm like, well, well nice to know. But anyways, I thought it, I thought it was kind of cool or whatever. But anyways, okay. Let's end this episode. Okay. Well, thank you guys for joining us on another episode. In Spanish. Uh, gracias por acompañarnos en este episodio de El Fishbowl. Asegúrate de suscribirte y dar un El like. No wow. Wow. Super wow. Let me try. Let me try. Let me try. Oh, you guys shy. You guys shy. You guys shy. No hemos terminado, muy. Ponte pantalones. <laughs> Wait, how how do you start? Bueno fue bueno. 
Gracias por acompañarnos en este episodio de El Fishbowl. Okay. Gracias por acompañarnos en este episodio okay. de Fishbowl. Asegúrate de darnos un like y suscríbete a nuestro canal para ver nuestros videos cada semana. Oh, that was good. That was that one came out better. Good. That was good. Okay. You ever feel like a praying mantis? No, really. Oh. What do you call a praying mantis? Mm. Does it also look like it's praying? Mantis. mantis. <laughs> But anyways, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. Drop a like. Subscribe. In Spanish Follow. and in English. Bye. Subscríbete. All right.